All right, we can a little bit, a little bit slower in this since we're going to use the second bit of information here. But what we're going to do now is we see that this line goes through like this, and we really don't need these other ones at all. We do need a line that goes all the way across here, however. So we can do a line. Remember, once you get to here, the layering becomes really important because you're drawing layers, lines on top of lines. So we're going to go from the intersection of here to the intersection there. Of course, that makes it easier on your eye if you do fillet radius. Close this up. Again, you're looking at what light you see comes down, and that going across, it turns out, goes all the way, but then you have another one offset two right here. Trim. And that's essentially what you see looking down on this thing. The next step now, and remember, don't forget your commands. So however you like to lengthen, I'm going to show you again, depending how you like lengthen, L-E-N-T-O. Maybe I'll make it another two longer. Oh, that's not what I used. I'm going to do lengthen delta. I'm going to change it five longer. Push that all the way out once again. So now I can do the reverse pool shot. Offset T for through. I'm going to do every line that's going to project across. So you see that this one does. And sometimes you don't want to do all these at once, I will have to say. You'd like to do one and finish out the other view. Okay. And the, you notice since those were put in the draw order behind, they stay behind. That's a nice thing about using offsets and not draws. But if I list any one of these, the LI for list, you see it's an X line. When I do the next step, and watch this, trim. Now you're going to look at selecting edges. And now for the first time, I'm going to teach you the F for fence. A fence point selects based on things that go across it. And right there, that does that. I'm going to left click, left click, space bar, space bar, C for copy, 90 degrees. Same thing here. I'll do one more, and then the rest you can just do copies and moves. Left, space bar, space bar, C for copy, 90. Of course, you all know that you could just do this. Left, left, space bar, C for copy, and then go to the end point, to the end point the end point. And I like it to draft this way because you'd like to think the way the light's going to go and shine. You know, basically it doesn't shine that way, but that's the idea of when you get into auxiliary views, that kind of reverse pool shot's going to be of importance. Now you're kind of to this point where you can draft the baselines on top, once again changing your layer, taking a line from the intersection here, and now your points will kind of become identified. This is a nice identified by those intersections. So we go there, there, all the way up, and kind of draft the, you've got two over, down to that line, and then back down to the intersection. So you have that. Those are all lines you see. You have a line going all the way across. This one here goes all the way across. And then this line here are right there and here and here. You can offset T for through. Shift right click intersection and trim. You start tracing lines back and forth, you then dimension, but that essentially is how you go about doing something like that. But then you start looking for 
inconsistencies where, for instance, you see there where things do not match up or you, your eye does not process that this is the part that you're looking at in 3D. And I think that then is good. The last thing you do, of course, now we're going to do some dimensioning eventually, but you lay out your plot now. So we're going to go ahead and lay out the plot and for the first time get a little bit better about, well, we don't want the projection lines on, so we're going to do this. Layer, take that projection line layer and turn it off or freeze it. Right. There might be some other adjustments we want to do, but right away you're going to save the layer state. That is probably best done on the layer toolbar. We're going to say save and we're going to overwrite that state. So that's going to remember that all those things are off. We draw a box. Now the box makes sense again. The view box, we'll see whether the view box works. We remember the fee box. I don't necessarily have one, but I'm using the 1.62 in a pinch. It's not exactly correct. I'm going to take a box here at 1.62 comma 1. That's, of course, kilometers to miles. It is also very close to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Take a left click, left click, space bar, space bar, space bar. Remember, 6 worked. It's not going to work for us here, so left click, left click, space bar, space bar, space bar, 2. 3 works a little bit better for us. I use 3 just by mistake. Now I can do the minus V for view, W for window, plot, view. My first corner is going to be the end point there. Second corner is the end point there. I want to point out that in this one we don't didn't really use enough room here for the dimensions. So when you lay this out, you probably want to have the dimensions down first. I've got the view laid out. I go to here. Someone gives you a box. You say, I don't need their box. You erase that box out. You go to the correct layer, which is laying out a viewport, is viewport. You bring in your fee box. I'm going to make mine the same at 1.6 comma 1. 1.62 comma 1. Once again, left click, left click, space bar, space bar, space bar, and then scale it up six times. This time, however, we can't scale it up twice. The scaling we're going to expect is we're going to get some kind of common scale. Later on, you'll think more about scale. So I'm going to do M view, which is on the viewport toolbar. O for object. Grab our object here. Of course, we then go out here. It looks like it did come in relatively correctly. B for view, plot view, set current, OK, and grab. And that should come in at some logical scale. You saw mine was 1 to 3, so that's a logical scale. You change the text however you know how. If you've got a template like this, you got to do something weird. So I'm going to show you that. DWG props. And that gives you some data. It's attached deep within the drawing. You check the scale, you do a number of other things, and then when you go ahead and here hit plot, it's not going to work here, but you want to make sure that your things are not missing. In other words, when you do that, you want to make sure that the settings, particularly the plot style table. This is probably going to have a terrible, terrible time plotting because I'm at home. I should have saved this. So I'm going to more or less go ahead and stop it and hope it comes in. Thanks for listening. That's problem 8-3. The 2D way. We'll do it in SketchUp, the 3D way.